Well, hello there, and welcome to the YouTube channel here at First United Methodist Church in Elkins. You probably can tell that I'm in the sanctuary of the church. It's one of my favorite spots. The cross behind me, I know it's flipped on your screen, but the words, God so loved, reminds us of that great verse in John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. Praise be to God. Now for some trivia. Who commanded the sun and the moon to stand still? I'll ask that again and give you the answer later. Now for some good humor. We always can use a good laugh. I like to laugh. I like to smile. Doctor, after the operation, you'll be a new man. Patient, could you send the bill to the old man? Doubt that the doctor would do that, but what a great quick wit that is. One more. A man hurried into the emergency room and asked an intern for a cure for the hiccups. The intern grabbed a cup of water and splashed it onto the man's face. What in the world did you do that for? asked the man. Well, you don't have the hiccups anymore, do you? asked the intern. No, he replied. My wife is in the car. She has them. <laughs> he got wet for nothing. <laughs> oh, you never know. And now for today's passage. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and his brothers stood outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So let's put this into context. Right before this, Jesus heals a man who was blind and mute because of a demon possession. That's what Matthew tells us. He was possessed by an evil force. All the people were astonished and asked, Could this be the son of David, a reference to Messiah? When the Pharisees heard this, they commented, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man drives out demons. Jesus responds by saying, If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? A verse before, he said that every kingdom, city, and house divided against itself cannot stand. The Pharisees then say to Jesus, Show us a sign. Jesus tells them, Only a wicked and perverse generation ask for signs. The only one you'll get is the sign of Jonah. Now, Jonah spent three days in the belly of a fish. And Jesus said that he would spend three days in the heart of the earth. This was the only sign he was referring to his death. Then Jesus' family shows up. Keep that thought in context. Mark gives us a little bit more information. In chapter 3 of his book, we see that Jesus was attracting great crowds. He chose his disciples, entered a home, and the home was so crowded that Jesus and his disciples couldn't even eat. The next verse reads, When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. It is then that the Pharisees say that Jesus drives out demons by the power of Beelzebul. Jesus has the same discourse about a house divided. Mark mentions that Jesus said this because he was being accused himself of being demon-possessed. It was then that his mothers and brothers arrived. They sent someone in to call him, and then Jesus defines his family. Now this brings questions to mind for me, and I'll share them with you. Would Mary, of all people, think Jesus was out of his mind? She, the benefactor of the virgin birth? She whom angels visited? She to whom Jesus announced at the age of 12, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? She who urged Jesus to do something when she went to a wedding along with Jesus and the wine ran out? 
He commented, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come, inferring that she should know this. She tells the wedding attendant, Do whatever he tells you. Then he changes the water into wine. Why would Mary think him crazy? Maybe she didn't. Maybe it was Jesus' brothers. Maybe Mary came along to keep the peace. Maybe Mary knew that Jesus would shed light on the situation. Maybe she knew it would be a step in the salvation of his brothers. We don't know for sure, but it's possible. Or maybe the family's idea of how he should conduct his ministry was different. Maybe they saw the road ahead, a fierce confrontation with the powers that be that would lead to his obvious death. He mentions his death in this discourse. Maybe the family, including Mary, was trying to divert a disaster. What mother wouldn't? Hmm. In this exchange, Jesus defines his family, and I think he does it tactfully, and I think he does it in a way to alleviate the concerns of his earthly family. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, He said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my mother, brother, and sister. I love that he included sister. He had sisters as well. It's his disciples that make up his family, but not just his disciples. It's whoever does the will of his Father. You see, that widens the circle and includes both his natural and spiritual family. That's amazing. I think he was saying to his natural family, I have to do my father's will. You know this. I have said this to you. If that will leads me to death, I must follow it. I'm in his hands. Don't worry. It's okay. I want you to be part of a house that's not divided. Trust me. I think that's what Jesus was getting at. We who are of the Christian faith are part of something much bigger than ourselves. That is something to marvel at. Now, I've shared this before, but I want to share it again. A family went to dine at a restaurant, and the six-year-old boy was asked to say the blessing. And this is what he said when he bowed his head. God is great. God is good. Thank you for this food. And I would even thank you more, God, if mom bought us some ice cream after dinner with liberty and justice for all. Amen. This brought several chuckles from other customers and also one strong remark from an older woman seated nearby. That's what's wrong with this country. Kids don't even know how to pray. Asking God for ice cream, why I never. Hmm. Tears welled up in the little boy's eyes as he exclaimed, Did I do something wrong? Is God mad at me? The mother reassured him that he had done nothing wrong and that he had done a great job. As an elderly gentleman walked up and said, I happen to know that God thought that was a great prayer. Really? asked the little boy. Cross my heart, answered the man. And with a sly grin, nodding toward the woman, too bad she never asks for ice cream. A little ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. Of course, mom bought the ice cream for everyone The little boy stared at his ice cream for a moment. Then he slid out of the booth, took his ice cream, and placed it in front of the older woman. With a big smile, he told her, This is for you. Sometimes a little ice cream is good for the soul, and my soul is good already. Poet laureate Edwin Markham wrote, He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle and took him in. My friends, love always finds a way. That's what Christ does, and that's what his disciples do too. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to express that all-inclusive and wonderful love to this world a world in greater need than perhaps ever before. Use us as part of your plan to soften hearts and to bring people into the fold of your family. Unite us as the church worldwide that we would have a visible 
an incredible witness to this world through the love of Christ. We pray for an end of this terrible pandemic. We continue to ask, even months into it, asking for healing and for a cure. Lord, we pray for protection for all. Be with those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, places near or full in capacity or beyond their capacity. Grant that first responders, that frontline personnel would not be burned out, but know your strength, the consolation of your presence. Keep them safe. Grant peace in this world. Use us as you see fit. Thank you for that great circle of love through Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. The answer to our trivia question, who commanded the sun and the moon to stand still? It was Joshua, chapter 10 of the book of Joshua. He was also involved in another great event, the Battle of Jericho, when the walls came a-tumbling down. And real quick, in case you tuned in late, Upper rooms are available today and tomorrow from 9 to 3 outside the Family Life Center mahogany door entrance. Take care. Know that I think of you often. I miss you. Can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, know that God is with us. God bless you.